Okay, this is the six six notes, and this is property of integrals. I've already told you some of these. This homework sheet will be due next Monday, Tuesday. You got a six three quiz on January twelfth and January thirteenth, and then next Monday, Tuesday will be a six four six five quiz. So properties, we've covered these up here at the top already, I believe, at least most of them. And the first one, uh, all it says is if you have some number times a function. Uh, you, before you take the integral, move that number to the front and go ahead and do the integral of the function and then you would take that number and multiply it times that answer. Uh, additive property says that if you're doing an integral of two functions together, you can split this integral up into the integral of the first function plus the integral of the second function. It's kind of like distributive property. Uh, the next one says that if you have uh, of an integral from A to B, and then C is somewhere between those. So in other words, you got some function here, and this is A, and this is B, and there's some C here in the middle somewhere, somewhere between A and B, just anywhere between them. These are the X values, the intervals, that you can break this up into two different intervals that you can go from A to C, and then C to B, and have the area under from uh, let's say this is the x-axis, the area from here to here plus the area from here to here is equal to the whole area, and there's sometimes we want to do that later. So you can split an integral up into two parts as long as this, this integral, the interval up there and the interval down there match up. They have to be the same. Uh, the next one down here says that If f is defined by x equals a is a constant, in other words, if this number up here is exactly the same as this, that would mean that you have no width of your rectangle from Riemann sum, that's the width zero, so whenever these two numbers match up, your answer is always zero for area. And then the last one is that if, you, if these numbers flip-flop, if you take your intervals and you flip-flop them, then you must put a negative in front of that integral. And uh, we've done something like that. So this first problem says evaluating this definite integral. So we know that the integral of this half of x part is 10. And we're looking for the integral of this sum. Well, we can rewrite this from this property right here as the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx plus the integral from 1 to 3 of 6 dx. Well, if you think about 6 dx, and you got 1 here, you got 3 here, 6 is a horizontal line right here. Now it keeps going forever, but we want this area down here, this graph. This is the area we want for just this part. So the base is 2, the height is 6. So 6 times 2 makes that area 12, and we know this area is 10. So this entire area would end up being 22. Uh, down here on this one, this is one that we're going to break up into different parts. It looks like 2. So we want to get the integral from negative 2 to 5. So if you look, we want the integral of negative 2 to 5 of 3 half x minus g of x. And we have different parts here, but they don't all match up. So what we got to do is we got to get all of these to end up being the same as this. So we can take a 3 in front here. Notice this 3 is just for the f of x part. And we can say that's the integral from negative 2 to 5. And we got f x dx. And then we can say minus the integral of negative 2 to 5 of g of x d of x. That's, that's using both this one and the one above it, scalar, moving the three in front and then changing this integral to both parts. Okay, so we have this answer right here. So this answer is negative four. So this over here is minus negative four just for this part. That minus and then the negative four that that gives me. I got this three in front here. Now, negative two to five I don't have, but I do have these that have uh, integral from negative 2 and 5 is here. So what I got to do is I got to take this negative 2 to 3 of f of x dx. And then I'm going to take this one and I need this 3 to match up with the 3 in the bottom like the one I just showed you up there above there. It's not there now. But I got to change or I got to turn this one upside down 
This one upside down, we're going to have that three match up with this three, and that goes five. Now, since I flip these, this becomes negative. That's the property that when you flip them, they become negative, which is up there as well. And that's with f of x dx. So if you look, uh, I now have a negative two to five because those match up. So three stays out front. And then the negative two to three x dx is six. So I can take a six here minus, well, this was three when it was like this, but since I flipped it upside down, I had to make a positive sign. So this would be minus three. And then out here, I got negative four. So now I can simplify this thing down. So this would be three times three minus four, which would end up being an area of five. So that's using some properties. Okay, the next page says area under the curve. And what this, what this part up here is trying to tell you is that since this is above the x-axis, it's a positive answer. And since this is below the x-axis, this will be a negative answer. And he would have, uh, we could do this on a calculator to get an exact problem. Now we're going to do some uh, transformations from pre-cal. So this is the original function right here, the f of x. And then right here, if you look, they put a negative in front of x. Now, some of you asked this on the last one. What that does is it takes all of these points and reflects them across the y-axis. So if you look, this point that was right here at the first tick mark in that point is now reflected over to here. This point that was over here on the left side is reflected across, and that's now this point. Uh, this point that is here is reflected across the Y to this point, and this point that is here is reflected across the Y to here. This next problem is saying the absolute value of X. So this one's kind of funky because when you plug in a negative value for X into an absolute value, it makes it a positive. So like when I plugged in negative, let's say I take this maximum point here, or this point right here that gave me a max, if I plug in the negative of that, that gives me this point that is that max. So this negative value actually gives me the y value out for this, which is this point is why that's there. And for every negative number we plug in here, it becomes a positive x. So the same y that's over here is the same y that's over there. So it ends up being a reflection across the x-axis. So this is also reflecting across the y-axis when you have that absolute value deal there. And then the next problem, uh, these are examples, says the figure to the right shows the graph of f. The areas of the region are given to you. So if you look right here, the area under this curve is 15. This down here is 5, but it's actually a negative 5 because it's underneath. This area is negative 7, and that area is 10. And we want to use the... Uh, the uh, problems we've had to solve these, these integrals down here. So that first integral, well, the given integral says from C to zero is three. So this given integral up here from right there says from C to zero is three. And if you look, they give you over here, here's your A, B, uh, C is here, B is here, and that is it. So this is three right here is what this is telling me right there. Okay, so from three, C to zero is three, it tells me that one's three. All right, determine the values of these functions. So the first function says zero to E. So we're starting at the origin and we're going out to E. So starting here at the origin and going out to E is going to be these two areas together. Well, that first area is underneath, so it's negative seven. The other area is above, so it's positive 10, so this would be three. The next one says B to D. So we're going to go from this B over here to this D. So I've got a negative 5 because it's underneath. i got a positive 3, and I have a negative 7. So this would end up being negative 9. Now the next one says the absolute value of Y. So that means all of these functions, all of these Y values that are at the bottom would be flipped upside down, so they would come up here on this, and this one would come up here on this. So now all these become positive numbers. This part's not even here anymore when you do absolute value of Y. So from D to zero, so let's see, where's D? Okay, now this one's a little tricky because we're going D to zero, which the area from zero to D, 
the area from 0 to D would be 7. But we're doing D to 0, so we're flipping it upside down, so this area should be negative 7 because it's going backwards. And we have to flip these upside down. Okay, let's do this one. This says take the absolute value, or take the integral of this whole function, and when you're done, take the absolute value of that answer. So it says from uh, a to zero. So from A, we're starting here, and we're going over here to zero. Remember, this is three. So I got 15 minus five plus three, and that's all still an absolute value because of those. So 18 minus five is 13, and the absolute value of 13 is 13. So that would be that area. Okay, this one is like this problem where it reflects it across the x-axis. So anything. Anything that's negative over here is going to reflect the positive value that way. So this one's a little tricky. And we're getting this one from negative E to E. Okay, so in other words, everything over here is a mirror reflection over to this side. Because if I plug in negative E, that's the same as positive E. But, so that means everything here has to be reflected over to here. So this graph is no longer really in here. This this part's gone. So this this part goes down, it comes back up, it comes back down to where this is negative e, and this area is 10, and this area down here is negative 7, just like that. So this is going to equal uh, 10 minus 7 minus 7 plus 10, or you could have said 2 times 10 because there's two of those, and 2 times negative 7. So 20 minus 14 is 6. And then this negative x is also reflecting everything across the x axis. So everything on this side is over there, and everything on this side is over here. So from negative c to a. So negative c. When you plug in negative C, you actually get out a positive C. So we got to take this point over to here. We got to take this point over to here. We got to take this point stays on the y-axis because when we front the car, something it stays in there. So this part is still three. Let's see. We are going to uh, negative A. So when you plug in negative A. See, this is kind of tricky because this is A, so negative A is over here. When you plug in negative A, it gets you back over here to this A. Okay, so we want to go from here all the way to here is what we're trying to do. So, let's see, so this, this point is going to reflect over to here. So there's a, there's a D point, because that would be negative D now, so this comes over here like this. And this is negative D, and this E reflects over to there, so that is negative E to here. That's negative E, negative D. And we're doing negative C, so let's see, C was here, so that's over there. So we got, we got that 3, we got this 7, and we have this 10. So we would have 10 minus 7 plus 3, which is 6. And this last problem, integrating a function with discontinuity. So if you look at this, we're going from 0 to 5. Well, this graph works from 0 to 3. So from 0, I plug in 0. So I plug in 0, and I get out 7. This is the line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My slope's negative 2. I go down 2 over 1. That's to the 1. Down 2 over 1. That's to 2. Down 2 over 1. That's to 3. So that from 0 to 3, and we're starting at 0 because of that, this function is going like this. Now it keeps going further to the left, but I don't care about that. And then the rest of the graph for x greater than 3, it's 4. So this graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, is here going that way, but I want to stop at 5. So that's 3, 4, 5. So we're stopping it here. Even though this graph keeps going, I don't care. And this graph keeps going, I don't care. So I want to get this area right here. So this thing is a trapezoid because that and that are parallel. This is 1 and this is 7. 
and this is my height right here, which is three. So that integral from zero to five of f of x dx is going to be that trapezoid, which is seven plus one times the height of three divided by two. And then the area of this rectangle, which is this base, one, two, three, four, that height, two times four, and that's your area. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it. So that's eight divided by two is four times three is 12 plus eight. This area would be 20. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. I almost didn't get done.